Diablo 4's Season 4 is almost ready to go. Next Tuesday, we finally get to play with all of the new loot, the new temperings, and all of the stuff that is coming with Season 4. It's going to be interesting to see how the changes to tempering and everything else is going to affect all of the other builds. And also, we have tormented uber bosses now that are actually making it very important that your build can easily switch to a boss killing version. So the blood builds are generally on the lower side of the tier list this season from what we know now. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you the blood lands and the blood surge that are going to be put up on max roll. And of course, you will be able to read up on all of the stuff on the blood lands and also the blood surge necromancer endgame guides that are currently being updated as we speak on max roll. If you have any questions, you know where to find me over on Twitch or also you can ask in the YouTube comments below. I'm uh, reading all of those trying to give you guys all of the answers um, that you need. And very important, this time around, it is going to be very necessary for you guys to hit certain caps because we get so many stats, like a lot of life armor is going to be very easily capped now. And we do have some breakpoints that you guys need to hit for yourself. For example, you need 100% additional movement speed. And you can see where we are going to be putting those or recommending those rather for you guys to actually um, get them on. So for example, movement speed will obviously be on the boots. You can see that we kind of want you to uh, masterwork, crit these as much as you can. This is what this new get green arrow on max roll is going to be. And you can also see what we want you guys to temper on them. For example, on the boots, on, uh, in total, we almost have 70% movement speed, but that's not enough with all of the new systems that we are getting in Season 4. So this is why we have added a list for the damage scaling and the defense utility scaling and certain breakpoints you guys need to hit at the start of your endgame journey, which basically means as soon as you start farming the higher levels of pit for your neath iron, so above uh, T60 in the pit, you should definitely have stuff that is utility based here at the bottom. And obviously you need the damage scaling stuff at the very least when you start farming the neath iron, the earlier you can get the stuff the better. And a lot of the defense breakpoints are required to even go into T60s in the pit. So obviously you need to be armor capped and you also need to be resistance capped. So try to aim for these two uh, very early on while you are trying to gather all of the other stats that are recommended here. And you can find where to put those uh, in the stat priority section down here or obviously you can find them in the build guides themselves. Now for the Bloodlands guide in itself, it is actually not that strong coming this season. We do have the uh, ability to use um, basically everything that we have been using before, but the good part about it is Bloodlands will not really need any essence generate uh, generation on top of it. We do have access to the essence per second nodes on three item slots, which is the helmet and the chest for the essence per second and also the boots. So obviously we want to get rid of having to figure out or worrying about our essence per second. That why, that's why we are stacking them on those three spots. And without masterwork critting on those, we already have 21 essence per second period. So this is going to help not only Bloodlands, but also all of the other builds that are using essence. So Bone Spear, Blood Surge. The problem that we had before sometimes on the builds, especially Blood Lands and Blood Surge, are basically non-existent any, non -existent anymore when it comes to uh, having the essence per second problem or the essence generation problem. This freed up a lot of um, skills in the skill tree. I'm not really going gonna go into huge detail here. It's very important that you know about the interaction of Hued Flesh together with Necrotic Carapace. So we can actually see that all of the builds that have a Hued Flesh um, 
recommended on max roll are also going to have the necrotic carapace at least one point of it because whenever a corpse is formed from your skills which also includes the hued flesh now as we have seen in the patch notes is gonna give you and, and help you reach that fortified state much earlier which also has been buffed from 10 to 15 percent so this is going to be extremely uh, vital for basically every build and gave access to bone spear for example to a very reliable source of fortify now obviously you could choose between drain vitality or necrotic carapace if you see that the necrotic carapace doesn't perform as you like it you can easily remove the point out of here and put it back into drain vitality but this is only a blood surge and blood lands problem um, the rest is pretty standard. Uh, the good thing about Inspiring Leader now is that you get 12% crit chance instead of attack speed. Uh, immensely helpful for the blood builds because attack speed was never really a problem from Bloodlands or Blood Surge anyway. And uh, this is basically a huge buff when it comes to that. But unfortunately, blood still seems to be lacking a multiplier like uh, Bone Spear has kind of the same problem here. But obviously we have the um, summoner builds or the minion builds to fall back onto as, as necros and those are also going to be covered in the future videos so don't worry about this there's going to be a lot of content coming up in over the next uh, seven days until basically the season releases and then you will always uh, find all the other stuff on the twitch while we are going to re-upload the findings on youtube then again so stay tuned for quite a lot of content coming up not only necro related but also general gameplay stuff when it comes to that um necessarily uh, we will quickly go through the um, changes that we had for, for the uh, from the other seasons for, from from the previous seasons basically, and we do have access to hardened bones now, which is insane. Um, we flat out get a 25% damage reduction, and especially with the scaling content of the pit that is now going to go and scale above the 199 uh, monster level is going to be very helpful. The Hungry Blood, Standard Stuff, Blood Moon Breaches, all of that is going to go into uh, the normal build. No surprises there. But the thing is, uh, we are going to go with a two-hander because that is going to allow us to hit the attack power cap with Rathmas chosen on the necklace because we're going to go and get 75% attack speed here with uh, Rathmas and we're going to go and get the remaining 31.9% blood attack speed, which obviously sums up to higher than 100%, but we maybe you don't get a max roll somewhere and, and then you're still going to hit the uh, maximum attack power cap during Rathmas Chosen, which in turn is going to help you overpower again, reactivating Rathmas Chosen. So in, in theory, you should be in Rathmas Chosen all of the time because in those four seconds that you have the 75% attack speed running, you are going to go and overpower again, basically resetting or re-upping the Rathmas Chosen effect on yourself. This is possible uh, very easy with the two-hander blood attack speed weapon here, and then it frees up attack speed on all of the other item slots. So therefore we went with a two-hander, but not only that, the huge amount of maximum life with the greater FX is going to come in especially handy for the blood builds because as you can see here we do we run 57,000 uh, life currently and with how overpower works where it scales with your max hp and then deals more damage that way is gonna be insane especially on a greater fx two-hander where we are gonna put just two we could just master work it two to three times if you get super lucky for example but I didn't go super crazy on, on the uh, masterworks here to have like a little bit of leeway when it comes to the actual stats on the character sheet. It's very important when you are using the max role planner um, before season four has gone live that you put the little dot here inside of the PTR box because if you put this to life then uh, you, you see items like this so definitely make sure that you put this to PTR and then you get actually uh, then you can actually see all of the stuff that we are um, planning for right here with the new and updated PTR version of the game and then standard stuff gore quilts hungry blood uh, grasping veins um, very important to hit the 100% uh, crit chance during grasping veins as you could also read in the written guide and yeah we're gonna sacrifice the skirmishers the uh 
bone mages and the iron golem again just normal pretty uh, just just standard uh, blood stuff and for the paragon we actually are gonna go a little bit crazy it might seem um but it it's just if you if you calculate it if you um, put this into the uh, calculator sheets this is just the best option that we currently have literally running absolute minimum requirements on all of the glyphs and straight up just pathing through to the next glyph slot and if you have something um, useful for example like the bloodbath here you obviously take that and while we are doing so we also take some uh, resistance oil because blood is not so uh, easily um it's not so easy on the resistance cap. You can see uh, this is way over capped, but the max roll planner currently does not adjust for the new values on the jewelry. So make sure that you hit the resistance cap. If you are above it, there are very easy points right here to uh, get rid of, and then you can actually put them somewhere else where you need them. But I will obviously update all of the builds throughout the season, so don't worry about that. Um, there is also more resistance over here, although I wouldn't take out this because this is buffed by the corporeal glyph, so these are actually quite valuable here. Just try to maximize the amount of multipliers that you get from the glyphs and then beeline basically instantly towards the um, next glyph slot or the next valuable uh, legendary node on the paragon tree and what's also pretty important here is when you scroll down a little bit you can see that i have done six variants for the bloodlands a starter variant where you basically see everything um, that you need to have to start the build usually around level 50 or so where you uh, know where to put all the stuff the skill tree also changes a little bit and again this is all going to be uh, easily digestible when you go and check out the end game progression and variants here on the chapter four where you can scroll down you can see the starter you see the skill tree changes i wrote out everything that you need to change and why you need to change that for example in the beginning we're actually running with the cold mages because those are going to help us with essence generation and if you have enough essence you can already sacrifice those for the bones but again you don't have to re-watch this video to get all of the information instead you can just go to the uh, max roll guide that will be updated just before season four launch. This is a preview that you're seeing. So we are still polishing this in the background. And then as soon as we hit the season four magical button, then all of the guides on the website will be updated to the new season four version. So if you're currently getting a sneak peek here of the Bloodlands, for example, this is also why the planners are looking a little bit weird. This will be fixed when we are... Um, again hitting the button and you can see that you are going to be progressing through the uh, various variants here and i'm explaining where what you need to change and also um, how the tempers and also the masterworks are going to look like which um, uniques do you want to get where do you want to put them if you get gear if you get the shako for example and starless skies where do you put those how do you change your tempers because we're actually going to get rid of juggernauts then and then you know like all of that written here in the guide i will obviously put the link down to the written guide in the description below and you can always access um if you don't like the the written build guides and you just want the raw information you can always click on that icon right there or the planner itself and then you actually get into the planner that is behind the build guide and then you can see you have all the variants here and um, you can take a look at all of the stuff the paragon board does not change at all um, the only th time where it changes is that uh, the leveling to 100 you have certain stages right here where you can see it's changing from this is the start leaderboard this is where you need to put your points for the start then you go and um, unlock the next paragon and then you go and get the flesh eater and then at the very end when you have put in everything um, there is one final step here or some optimization and then you're basically done. This obviously is also um, in the preview version right here in the build guide. So for example, um, if you scroll down here below in the skill tree and gameplay, you can see the Paragon board. You can full screen this if you want. You can put it on your second monitor and then you just literally scroll to level while um, it is showing you in green where all of the new points are being placed. And especially in the last step, it's going to come in very handy because um, now, 
here on the wither board, you basically have put in all of the glyphs, all of the paragon boards are placed. And on the very last step, on the final step, you, we will do optimizations. And when you click here on the bottom right hand side where my mouse is, you can see that all of the changes are going to light up red for the points that you need to remove um, here, here, and then are going to light up green. Let's do this again. Um, for the points where you need to put them just to optimize the Paragon board even further and then have the final version left. And also for the blood search, everything is going to be down here uh, at the very bottom. You have eight variants this time because you also have the leveling there. There is also going to be a leveling guide, of course, that recommends blood search because the huge AOE of blood search is just insane. And also the uh, end game and the pit and also the speed farming, the ubers, the hardcore variants, all of that down at the very left bottom and if you prefer the written form there is obviously all of the stuff as well here on chapter 4 for example you can see what changes from the starter variant to the leveling to 100 variant to the end game and the pit variant all of that written and explained down here there is also obviously stuff in gear with uber uniques and you can click through all of the variants again this is going to be updated as soon as we press the magical season 4 button on max roll then the current blood search and the current bloodlands guide are going to be uh, updated to the stuff that we are preparing in the background and um again right here the paragon board you can just scroll through it and see how it changes from level to level or from board to board. Very important here, uh, the green stuff is going to show you where you need to put the points next. It's come, it comes in very handy for the very last step where you are optimizing from the uh, leveling part of the Paragon to the absolute endgame. For example, here on the Wither, you have placed your last Paragon board, you have placed your last Glyph. And then in the very last step here in the bottom right, you can now see where we removed stuff here on the red and then we put where we put the new stuff here on the green. Very nice feature in my opinion and um, makes it much easier to optimize after you are done leveling. And um, yeah, then on the planner, we are actually going to use Sacrilegious Soul to have some automation for the corpse explosion. Again, we have the same thing here with a two-hander where we are utilizing the blood attack speed, the huge blood attack speed that we get from the temper together with the wrath mask chosen on the neck, where we will easily reach attack speed cap during the uptime of wrath mask chosen. And that um, in, in between those four seconds, you are going to overpower again, basically giving you the attack speed cap um, permanently as long as you keep attacking on the bosses. And there is also the hardcore version because I myself play hardcore. If I ever decide to use Blood Surge for uh, speed farming, same with Bloodlands, there's also the hardcore version, then I can go and, and use this. It's going to use Littlest Wall. It's going to have a permanent bone storm. We swapped around some of the aspects. I suggest you check out the planners for yourself or use them as a starting point for your uh, own theory crafting when it comes to Season 4. Um, there is a lot more necromancer stuff and also general stuff coming up in the next few days i am currently recording six or seven videos this is the first one so if i sound energetic and then you see me uh on, on the next guides a little bit less energetic you know where it's coming from i'm trying to uh give my best let me know down in the comments below if you watched all the videos and you saw any difference. I'm actually really curious how that is going to go. Uh, again, all of the links are going to be down in the description below. You will find all of the blood guides, the written version, and you will also find the uh, planners. And obviously, I'm going to start uploading all of the general season four stuff. So um, everything that you are known um, that, that you know you had in season three from me, you're also going to get in season four and stuff on top of that. There's also a speed leveling guide coming up. So definitely make sure you don't miss out on that. And um, yeah, if you want to stay in touch, I suggest you check out the Twitch link that is going to be down in the description below. And if you like content similar to this and you don't want to miss out on all of the previous stuff that I just now mentioned, I suggest you subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.